Christ alone who took on flesh, fullness of God in From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand. So he returns or calls me home. Here is the power of with the Holy Spirit and enter in as we gather to worship. Good morning everybody. We want to welcome you to this morning's Sunday service. We're glad to have you with us. Uh, can you please bow your heads and close your eyes before we pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory and honor and praise this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we can gather together and praise your name, my God. We pray for the service this morning that you would be with us, you would bless us. I thank you, Lord, for, this, for the gathering of the saints together. We pray for everything that's going to be said and done today will be said and done for your glory and your majesty. We pray for the singing, the praise and worship 
God, that you will be with your people there, that would uh, sing praises to you. We pray that the, the, the praises will come up to you like a sweet smelling savor. We pray for your servant that will bring forth your word. Your word will be quick and powerful and sharper than any two edges of a sword. And I thank you, Lord, that you will touch lives today. Many people will be saved through your word. Be with us and bless us as we further tarry this morning. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you You call my name Then I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know The old made new Jesus, when I met you When you called my name Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day I needed rescue, my sin was heavy But chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan But you called me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open Cause when you call my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness into your glorious day
Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's broadcast, Sunday, the 14th of June, 2020. We take this opportunity on behalf of Portia and myself to welcome you to this morning's broadcast, and we are grateful that, we've ha that we have this opportunity to just come and present and be online amidst all that we face as a country. Uh, the goodness of God. Did you enjoy that time of worship? I really love the song, Goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. 
all my life you have been so, so good. Can you say that with me this morning? If you can, why don't you just send me a little hashtag, God is faithful. Hashtag God is faithful. Send that in as a comment, whether you're watching on Facebook or whether you're watching on YouTube. Just send those comments in that hashtag God is faithful. And I can tell you something, dear friend, that when you make that declaration and when you proclaim that the Lord is faithful, it just places you in a such a positive position that you know that in spite of whatever is happening, God is is faithful and God is on your side. This morning, before we go any further, I want to officially just say welcome. And for those of you that have just joined, a very warm welcome. And you are free now to start your watch parties if you haven't already and invite your friends to come on. Remember, today we are going to be speaking to you about a subject that called You've Got the Authority. Say, I've got the authority. Amen. Say it again. Say, I've got the authority. Amen. Well, but before we go there, I just want to uh, make um, a few announcements before we go into a time of the offering. You know that we are right now going through the time of the COVID-19 and we are way into it right now with the lockdown and level three that's taken place and some of the kids that have gone back to school. We've also seen and you've also noticed that there's a change of weather. We are getting colder and that means we are in officially in winter. Here in South Africa, the months of June, July and August is our winter months. And with that, you know that there are many people out there that are really struggling and they struggle with the cold. And so we are going to uh, commence a a program called Warm Hearts, Warm Clothes. Or, or is it the other way? Warm Clothes equals Warm Hearts. Warm clothes equals warm hearts. So you're going to see that coming up on the screen. And we would like you just to partner with us. How can you do that? You know, if you've got clothing at home that you have not used, clothing that has been lying there in your uh, cupboards for a while that you have not used, just bring that through. We are looking for winter clothing. Winter clothing. Do your cleaning. Do your spring cleaning. The ideal time to do that. Spring cleaning in winter. So get out all those clothes, just make sure they're in good condition. If you need to get it washed and clean, do so and bring it in. Contact us and we'll make arrangements to get the drop off here at the church. We are going to be going on a winter drive to go and help those folk out there that are homeless and people that are in need of clothing. And also coupled with that, blankets. We're going to be giving out blankets. So on Tuesday night, I mentioned that if you know a family or two that is in need of a blanket that can do with the blanket, please let us know. Communicate that to us on our WhatsApp number that's on the screen. Send us a message and we will then get the team to get that arranged and we will see how we can get that out to whoever is in need. So that's blankets and warm clothing. So dear friends, this morning I am so excited because we are fast going into the month of June and next week Sunday is... What is it? Next week, Sunday is Father's Day. Amen. And so I'm excited because I know that I'm going to be celebrating. I've got a father. I've got fathers around, etc. And we're going to be celebrating Father's Day as a church for the very first time. And just like it was for Mother's Day, we had so much that had been planned. But nevertheless, we were in lockdown and we all understand that. And we tried our best to present something to you that would be a blessing. And so we're going to attempt to do the very same next week, Sunday. So make sure you are you are tuned in and you get all your friends and all your family because I can guarantee you next week Sunday is going to be a blessed service for all the dads in fact every family that's going to be watching amen so I'm that's why I'm so excited it's the countdown to Father's Day and so this morning without much further ado I want to hand you over to one of our leaders in the name of Stanley Angapa and he's going to come now and take us through the time of giving let's welcome Stanley Angapa we are going now into a time of giving my scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19. 
Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So what is Jesus Christ telling us here today, this morning? He's clearly giving us an instruction. He's saying, do not build up for yourselves earthly treasures. Or not, do not lay up or build up for yourselves earthly treasures, but rather build up for yourselves heavenly treasures. You may ask me the question, why? And I've got a few points here for you this morning. Your earthly treasures can be eaten up by moth and rust. You know, everything on this earth can be destroyed. It can be stolen by thieves. Um, wherever there's riches and wealth, you know, thieves are always plotting and planning to steal it. So anything that's earthly or temporal can be stolen. Any, everything on earth is temporary. Remember something that at, one, at some stage in time, everything on this earth is going to be destroyed. Uh, the Bible says clearly that this existing heaven and earth is going to be destroyed and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So that's what God is telling us today. We need not build up for ourselves treasures on heaven. Do not look and desire too much the things on earth. What is he con commanding us and instruct instructing us to do is rather lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven. How do we do that, you can ask me. And here's a few points for you. We need to have good works to mankind. Our good works is so important. As we do good to others, those good deeds will come back to us at some stage. To serve in the kingdom of God. We need to be in a posture of service in the kingdom of God, which is so important. Remember, we are fearfully and wonderfully created by the Most High God. When He created us, He created us for a purpose. Everybody, everybody that's on this earth has a purpose and a plan. We're not a mistake. We're not here by any chance. Remember, when he called me during this era and time, there was a specific uh, time for it. There's a specific time for me and a specific time for everybody in this era. So we need to find our purpose and be of service in the kingdom of God. I move by Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7. He says, before I formed you in your womb, I knew you. So what is he telling to Jeremiah? Before even he was formed in his womb, he knew Jeremiah. He's simply saying that his spirit was created long before he came on this earth. Just like that, all our spirits are created long before we come onto this earth. And he places us on this earth for a reason. Let us be of service in the kingdom of God. Ministering the good news to save souls, that's our job. As soldiers in this army of Christ, we need to save souls. The kingdom of God's treasure is souls. So that's what Jesus Christ desires the most. And that will build up our heavenly treasure, is souls. That's what God loves the most. Any soul that gives his heart to the Lord, remember the angels in heaven rejoice. Giving to the local church which is so important because as we give, it shall be given unto us, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Remember, the, we, cannot be, we cannot touch as many lives as a local church could because they, has, they have a bigger footprint of responsibility and so they can reach more lives than us. So as we give, the church helps other needy people and then our blessing transfer, transfers automatically to the church ultimately to us giving to the needy the bible says the poor will always be with us so we always need to give to the poor helping the widow and the orphan james 1 27 religion that is pure and undefiled before god the father is to visit the widows and orphans in their afflictions the most trodden down people are widows and orphans so whenever we have a chance let's try and help the widows and orphans, so that our treasures can be laid up in heaven. Finally, in conclusion, Jesus was very smart in what he said. He said, where your treasure is, is where your heart is, i.e., where, where you sow into. If you have earthly things, your heart will always be thinking about your earthly goods. But if you sow into the kingdom of God, your focus then transfers from the earthly 
possessions, your earthly things, to the heavenly things, your, your heart and your desire and your focus. You focus more on kingdom things. That's what he wants us to do. There is two kingdoms on this earth, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. The kingdom of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of the devil. There's a world system and there's a, there's a kingdom system. Let us follow. That's what he's telling us today. Let us not be deceived with the earthly system. Where the earthly system says, let us gather, gather as much as, as for ourselves and keep it to ourselves. But the kingdom principle is clear. Let us give. The more you give on this earth, the more you give, the more blessings come to you to give further and you lay up all your treasures in heaven. So that one day when you get up there, when you meet our master, he'll tell you, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the kingdom of God. Thank you. Amen. Okay, thank you, Stanley, for that. And uh, also to you that are partnering with us and are making your faithful contributions to all the family church members, God bless you. This morning, I want to introduce you to two more of our team leaders. You know, we've been doing that now for the past few weeks. We're bringing them online so that you can see them. They can greet you. And I know that you are missing them. They also equally missing you. So this morning, without much further ado, we are going to be introducing to you Earl Marillia and Janet James. Earl Marillia and Janet James. Those are the two of our team leaders that will be coming to greet you now. So let us welcome them. Hi, church family. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Church family, I know it's been weeks and weeks since we've seen each other, but I can't wait to see you guys when we get back. And I pray that you're using this time wisely with you and your family, constantly praying and reading the word and seeking guidance and protection from our, from our Lord Jesus Christ. I know that it's going to be another few weeks, but we will get there. It's lockdown level three now. We are almost at the end of the road. This is just a season. Thank you very much. Hello, church family, and a special hello goes out to all the children and family kids. From my family to yours, I'd just like to say that we miss you guys a lot and that we're praying for you. I know that this lockdown has been a hard pill for some of us to swallow. Some of us have been harder hit than others. But just remember that we serve a miracle-working, way-making, promise-keeping God. He has never left us and neither has He forsaken us before, and He's not going to do it now. So just hold on and keep praying because we will get through this. Remember that we love you and we're praying for you and that we will meet together to fellowship and to worship and to honor our God. Goodbye. Amen. Well, thank you, Earl and Janet, and I'm sure you all were excited to see them online. And uh, you're going to be seeing more over the next uh, weeks. And uh, that's also something that we are looking forward to. Dear friends, we are going to go into the time of the word right now. And I would like you just to bow your heads with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we've gathered in all our various homes and we've come together as families and mums and dads and children and grandparents and grandmums and granddads and friends and wherever we are watching from today, we want to say thank you for the privilege to just be in the presence of a mighty God to just be in the presence of a loving God. And so, Father, today, as I will minister your word, the word of God that you have given me to begin to teach your children, that we have the authority. I pray today, O oh God, that as your word will come, that as your word will begin to be spoken today, that everyone that is watching will understand and grab hold of this word. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that as they get hold of this word, that this word will become like fire shut up in their bones, and that they will begin to speak this word in season, walk in 
in the revelation and the light of this word and they will accomplish the purpose and the plan that you have set out for them. Every wandering thought right now, I bring it to the subjection of the Holy Spirit and I say, welcome Holy Spirit into our homes. Welcome Holy Spirit right here where I am right now. And I thank you that this morning we are going to sense your presence and we're going to sense a breakthrough in every one of our lives as we ask it in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Well, this morning I want to commence with uh, giving you the pastor's thought for the week. And you're going to see it now coming up on the, screen, on the screen. Humility and grace live in the heart of the person who is not proud of their incredible accomplishments, but instead is grateful for the incredible opportunities. Let me repeat that one more time. Humility and grace live in the heart of the person who is not proud of their incredible accomplishments, but instead is grateful for their incredible opportunities. And so, dear friend, what we learn from this is that we need to, if there's anything we have to make a big noise about, is that every accomplishment that we have is in fact an incredible opportunity. We need to look at it from that perspective because many good people go and when there's great accomplishments, accomplishments that come our way, we find that if we don't handle that right, uh, the enemy comes and robs good people of good purpose that God is destined for our lives. So that's our thought for the week. And let us just digest that as we will now get into a time of the word. This morning's uh, teaching is called, You've Got the Authority. You have got the authority. I want to relate a little story to you before we begin. I remember when I first started a job, and you know when you're young and you get into the corporate world and you start seeing all these uh, major players in the uh, corporate world, you start to see, you watch movies, you start to see things on TV, you read about them, and then you start to picture yourself in one of those positions growing up, you start to picture yourself because everyone who starts off and we start off young in life, we want to make a success of our life. I don't think anybody does not want to make a success of our lives. And then as time went on, I started, I got into a company and I started to then, I wanted to grow in this company. I've done many things and I started to see the hand of God upon my life. And then I, I grew, I grew into certain junior management positions. And I never forget the day I was in duty and I was in charge of the uh, store that day. And the one thing that I used to really fear, and listen to this. Some of you will laugh at what I'm going to tell you. I used to really fear people coming in. And because I'm in charge now, they come into the store and they want to complain. And they are not happy. And they want to throw their toys out of the cot. And so it goes through the chain of uh, management. And eventually it has to come to my desk. And that's something that I just feared. I did not want to be, meet any confrontational customers. And neither did I want to be confrontational. So I shied away from that. But then as time went on, I realized and I said to myself, no, what is your problem? Why are you shying away from that authority that has been invested in you by the company? And the day that I realized realize that I'm carrying delegated authority, that I've got the authority given to me by the company, and whatever decision I take, whatever decision I make, I know that that decision is going to be backed up by the company because they have given that to me. And so when I realized that, I thought, man, this is something because now I understand I do not need to fear. And that is similarly so, but I'm going to just stay with me as we read the Word of God and go into this morning's teaching. Turn with me right now to your Bibles in the book of Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to read from verse 13 right up unto verse number 20. So let's start reading. Matthew chapter 16 verse number 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men say that I am? That the Son of Man is. Sorry. Uh, by the way, I am reading from the New King James Version. The New King James Version. Verse number 14. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, 
but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys. Verse 19. Jesus says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And this morning, dear friends, I want to ask you three questions. The first one is, do you really understand what authority you carry as a child of God? Do you really understand what authority you carry as a child of God? Because you can see what Jesus declared there in the book of Matthew chapter 16. And he says that he has given us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And that's the measure of authority that Jesus had given us. So the first question I repeat that to you. Do you really understand what authority you carry as a child? child of God. Something to think about this morning. Secondly, does it give you perspective of your role as a child of God? Does that authority give you perspective at, uh, of your role as a son or a daughter of the living God? And number three is, are you fulfilling that role? Three very important questions. Do you really understand what authority you carry as a child of God? Does it give you perspective of your, of your role as a child of God? And number three, are you fulfilling that role? And so this morning, let us go into the teaching. You know, when we talk about having authority in the kingdom of God and having authority as a child of God, many people don't realize, like I didn't realize when I had that promotion and I had the authority to make certain decisions, I had the authority to, to write certain things off and give certain discounts, whatever the case may be. And so with that authority came a measure of fear because I did not realize fully the measure of that authority that I carried. And the same goes with us as children of God. Many of us get confused with the authority that God has given us. God says that he has given us all authority and all power that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And many times when we go and we start talking about binding and loosing, we start to give the credit so much that, sorry, the devil so much of credit and you know when they talk about binding and loosing and normally you go into prayer intercession and warfare and you and if there's someone that's oppressed or possessed and there's a certain prayer that we have and we go into that and we pray strategically accordingly to, to what the word says now when we pray and when we bind and when we loose remember we have the authority to do that right? You as a child of God has the authority to do that. And so when we pray and we pray over an individual, we do not leave them empty. We do not bind anything that is evil over their lives and leave it empty. So in other words, what we do is we bind something and we loose something. Right? So we bind something and we loose something. So in other words, you bind that which is evil and you loose that which is good. You bind that which is of the enemy and you loose that which is from God. So there's some examples coming up on the screen. We bind sickness and we loose healing. We bind poverty and we loose abundance. We bind fear and we loose love, power and a sound mind and we bind curses and we loose blessings. Remember that we must not ever go into a time where we bind and we pray over situations with the authority that God has given us and we leave things empty. Even you as a believer, when you empty yourself out of everything, every bit of the flesh, we cannot stay empty because the enemy looks for dry places. 
And if you remain empty, you can, that's all you'll be is just empty because the Spirit of God has not been welcomed. And therefore, today I want to remind you as a child of God, the authority that you carry is, com- is accompanied by the Holy Spirit that is in your life. And because the Holy Spirit is active in your life, no weapon formed against you will prosper. But unfortunately, as we go and I see people, you find out that many people look at the types of prayer and they say and they pray and they think but I've got the authority I've got the power but no what is happening how come I'm not getting answers to my prayer my dear friends let me give you an illustration and I'm going to set you up with something here just like how I know God sets us up as we start to pray You know, sometimes we ask for strength or wisdom or prosperity or courage or love or whatever it may be. We pray and we ask God for that. But this is something that I want to leave with you today. And you can see it coming up on the screen and take a picture and you can put it out on social media as the time is right. But here is something. This is an answered prayer and God is setting you up. So I asked for strength and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom and God gave me problems to, uh, for me to learn to solve. You see, God won't give you strength without having to give you difficulties. If you want strength from God, God is going to give you the difficulties because through those difficulties, that's how God works and He makes you strong. So when the difficulties come, don't think God has forgotten you. Be grateful and thank Him because He's working all things together for your good. He's making you strong. And same with wisdom. When we cry out for wisdom, God God gave me problems to learn to solve. When you have all these issues that are coming up and God is trusting you to learn how to solve them wisdom comes through that and the next one is we ask for prosperity and then God gave me a brain and brawn to work many people don't believe that but friends I'm telling you God has given you the brain and the brawn to work he's given us the hands and he's given us the intellect to work and to work hard and you want to be prosperous money don't come easily and overnight money hastily gained is hastily lost let me repeat that while we're talking about prosperity many people want to get rich overnight and get rich quick getting rich is not the objective God wants to see whether he can trust you and money hastily gained is hastily lost if you get money quick you're going to lose that money quick but if you work for that money over time if you work for that money as time goes on you will find that as because you have gone through that process God is starting to trust you with what he blesses you how about this I asked for courage and God gave me dangers to overcome so you're going through dangers right now in your life and you're wondering but what is God what are you doing maybe you've asked for courage and you've forgotten about it God is setting you up to be a courageous child of God I've asked for favors and God gave me people to help I asked for uh, I received nothing I wanted I received everything I needed my prayer has been answered I received nothing that I wanted, but I received everything that I needed. Isn't that interesting? And when you think you have the authority and then you see God is not answering your prayers, those are some reminders. Yes, it we're putting it up again on the screen. Those are some reminders that when you ask for strength, for wisdom, for prosperity, God is going to take you through those situations and he's going to answer your prayer and he's going to prepare you for what it is that he has for your life. Let us go now to the book of Second Corinthians, uh, uh, beg your pardon, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 15. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 15. And this is the story of Jehoshaphat. You all remember Jehoshaphat, the king ruling over Judah. And so he got the report. And then when he got the report that all the other neighboring uh, countries want to come and they want to take over and plunder and destroy. Let's read what happens from verse number 15. And he said, listen, all of you. All you of Judah and your inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it is God's. 
Tomorrow go down against them, and they will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Verse number 18, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And verse number 20, sorry, verse number 19. Then the Levites of the children of the Korahites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and they went into the wilderness of Tekoa and they went out. Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who would sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army saying, Praise the Lord for his mercies endure it forever. Verse number 22. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab and Mount Sire, which had come against um, the Judah and they were defeated. Dear friends, that is a story that many of you have heard before and you understood that story and you understand that there was a process that took place for the victory to happen. And many times we as children of God, and this is why I went to that verse, and as the Holy Spirit led me to read the book of Chronicles, I find that as children of God, we carry the authority, but rarely when a threat comes, we do not seek the Lord. You see, King Jehoshaphat, the first thing he did when he got news that the other neighboring countries want to take over and want to come and destroy his nation, the first thing he did was he sought the Lord. And what happens when we get a threat in life, when something happens negatively and something happens uh, outside of what we uh, are not no, used to normally, we tend to go and speak to people. We tend to go and speak to friends. We tend to go and pick up the phone and talk to people. But I'm telling you today, the more you focus and turn to God, the more God is going to give you the answers and God is going to help you because it is a time coming where the nations and the nations of the world are looking now more to God than to man. And I'm telling you today as children of God that your faith has got to be in God. Don't ever put your faith on the things of this world. Don't ever put your faith on man because all of those things will crumble and fall. But God will never let you down. Do not be afraid nor dismayed for multitudes. Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat wasn't afraid for the, uh, or was he dismayed for the multitudes? The battle is not yours, but the battle is God's. I say that to you today. The battle is not yours, but the battle is God's. If you want to maintain your authority, if you want to maintain your power, you must understand that God has given you the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. And with that sound mind, you can go and you can accomplish the purpose and plan and whatever is coming up against you, you can bind that spirit in the name of Jesus because you carry the authority, you carry the power and you must understand that when the battle is God's, the battle is already won because the enemy is coming up against a mighty God just like the story of David and Goliath. Goliath was only able to take down that big giant because he knew his God was bigger and he knew his God was alive and he had faith in God. God, that God will never let him down. How about you? Do you have that same measure of faith to know that when you enter into a battle, when you enter into the fray, that God is not going to let you down? Don't fight them, but position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That is what the Bible says. Don't fight them, but position yourself. Now, dear friends, in order to position ourselves, it must mean that we must have faith. It has to, we have to have faith to 
position ourselves. Faith in what? Faith in a God who has made a promise. And the God who has promised is faithful to deliver. And so that is where we need to be. And sometimes because we do not stand still, because our position is incorrect, our position is one of anxiety and stress and worry and fear, then God cannot act. God cannot act and, and, and fulfill His word with spirits that are contrary to His word. When we come in line with what He says, then God can act and He can do what His word has promised. The Lord is with you, dear friends. If you are still out there today and you're watching this program and you are saying, no, but you are talking about authority, that I have the authority. I'm reminding you that you have the authority. Why? Because the Lord is with you. And then you see King Jehoshaphat went and he called the praises. And many times when we go through a time of battle and when we find ourselves in the fray of the enemy, we forget to praise God. But King Jehoshaphat knew that they need to send Judah first and go and pray. And the people of Judah went and they prayed and they shouted and they praised God. Let me tell you something, dear friends, that speaks of, of a position of faith. That speaks of going and praising and having a celebration and honoring God in spite of those that are coming behind you to attack you, break you and kill you, you still can praise God because you know that when you give him the glory, man your real God is sorted out and nothing that comes up against you will get you down because you're on the Lord's side and you're not on the enemy's side and let me say this to some of you who need this, uh, I speak this word prophetically today and I say rest cometh, rest is coming into your life, you're going to have divine rest one of these days get ready and receive that rest right now in the name of Jesus Christ the enemy will defeat themselves like we read on in the book of Chronicles the each of those nations fought each other eventually all of them died and the people of Judah could go and they could take the plunder and take back all the spoils from that and you know the rest of the story 1 Peter 5 verses 8 be sober you want to carry the authority as a believer? You must be sober and you must be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5.8 Understand that in order to maintain your authority, you've got to be sober and you've got to be vigilant. You've got to be sober-minded and you've got to be vigilant because the enemy wants to take you out. And don't think that you've got the authority and everything is fine. What does it mean to be sober and vigilant? You've got to maintain your relationship with God. You've got to be in constant prayer, praise and worshiping God. You've got to constantly read His Word and have a constant relationship with God. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5 also speaks about, and here are some scriptures that I want you to take down. These scriptures are going to help you to understand the power that you carry and the authority, but it will help you understand that it is not there for you to abuse, but it is there to establish the kingdom of God. First one is 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. Our weapons are not carnal. Remember that you have the authority and God has given you the authority and power to bind and loose, not because you have to go and you you have to annihilate everyone that walks the planet. No, our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty and they are powerful in pulling down our strongholds. And our battle, as I've said before, and you know this word, is not against flesh and blood. Get that out of your thinking. You're not fighting your brother. You're not fighting your sister. You're not fighting your neighbor. You're not fighting your boss. You're not fighting people around you. You are fighting spirits and principalities and powers. And take that to your prayer closet and break that power. And in the name of Jesus, I I know you're going to see it manifest in the lives of those that are you being challenged with. The next uh, 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 scripture I want to leave with you is Romans 12, 21. Don't overcome evil with evil. Don't ever overcome evil with evil. If someone has done evil to you, don't go and think now that you have to do evil to them. Dear friends, they say if you've been slapped on one cheek, turn the other cheek. Many people make a joke of that. I'm telling you this today in the spirit. If people do ill against you, don't talk ill against them. Just stop that. Just keep 
your mouth quiet and just hand them over to the Lord and say, Father, forgive them for they know that what they do. Don't say, Father, deal with them and all of that. That's God's business, how he deals with them. But pray for them. Pray a blessing over their lives. Pray that God will use them and God will change them and God will take them into the purpose. Pray a blessing, just like how you would pray for your family member. Pray that over your enemy because God is wanting to change your heart and not their heart. I say that to you today. Isaiah 40, 31, those who wait on the Lord. And if you want to maintain the authority, if you want to maintain the power that God has given you, then you've got to know you've got to wait on the Lord. You cannot carry this authority and power without waiting on God. This doesn't just come because you are a Christian. This doesn't just come because you've been baptized. This doesn't just come because you're saying that I believe in Jesus Christ. There is much more that, that God needs from you. God needs a constant relationship and God needs you to wait on him and speak to him so that he can speak to you the last verse scripture I want to leave with you is Joshua 1 9 be strong and courageous you know you've got that and I give you the reminder again like my story when I was in the secular world I did not carry out my responsibilities well why because I was not strong and I was not courageous but when I understood my position well when I understood my role well when I understood the power that I had my strength and my courageousness came and I say that to you today that is exactly how the spirit of God is working God Jesus Christ has said he's given you all authority and all power and whatever you bind on the is bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven as I come to a, con uh, a close today how do we behave with this authority how do we behave as children of God just with this authority and I've been thinking about that and I was wondering about it and I said no maybe it's good that you just tabulate this and teach the people and as much as I've learned it and I've seen through the years how my behavior with this authority was outside of the line of, of the will of God and then I learned those lessons and so therefore this is why I want to share this with you today number one how do you behave with this authority? Firstly, don't accept attacks over your family, your health. I'm talking about spiritual attacks. Don't accept it. When there's a tax coming over your family, when there's a tax coming over your marriage, when there's a tax coming over your health, when there are tax coming over your finances or your children or your business or whatever it is in your life, don't accept it for what it is. But you've got to go and you've got to fight it in prayer. You've got to be strategic in prayer. Don't even talk to people. Sometimes talking to people takes us backward because God says, speak to me, call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things so in not accepting it what do we do we got to fight this in the spirit we got to go into our prayer closet and remind God of his word bring his word before him remind him and pray that word and I can tell you dear friends like Portia and I have been in our prayer closet for many weeks now, months actually, and we've been praying in our closets and we are starting to see that God is starting to move in whatever it is that we are praying and areas that we are praying, we are starting to see changes take place. I'm saying to you, dear friends, you can be just like that. Don't accept the attacks that are coming over your life, but fight it in the spirit. Number two, obedience is the highest form of warfare. If you want to maintain your authority as a believer, if you want to remain and be strong as a believer then your obedience to the word of God is your highest form of warfare nothing can come against you when you walk in obedience to the word of God absolutely nothing on this in on this planet can come up against you and take you out because that's the highest form of warfare when you're in obedience to what God has said the next point is it is not it is no good casting out flesh issues and that is the issues of sin and repenting of the devil let me repeat that. It's on the screen now. It's no good casting out our flesh issues. And that's the issues of sin and repenting of the devil. No, we have to repent of our flesh issues and we have to cast out the devil. Does it make sense? Many times we want to cast out our flesh issues and we want to repent of the... Ah, let me tell you this to you. You have the authority. Before 
you can cast out the devil. Before you can cast him into a dry and into a barren place. Let me say this. Before you can cast him out, you've got to repent of your known sin. Because your known sin is going to be something that's going to be a blockage to your authority and your prayer life. And the more you are clean with all of that, I can tell you, dear friends, your prayer life takes a whole new turn. And you can break the power of the enemy over your life and over your family in the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak that to you today. Get to a place of divine strength. You've got the authority. You've got the power. Go and exercise that power. And lastly, understand the spiritual war. Understand that the spiritual war, you know, when there's a fight and when the country is fighting against one country and they're coming and so the armies are coming, they will, the, 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 the one country will look at the other country as the enemy. And the enemy always knows, listen to what I'm about to say, the enemy always knows where the weaknesses of that country is. They know that come through the south border, they are not fully manned. They know that if they come through the western border, they've got too many men there so you can't attack. Then they know that if they come through the east side river, they can get in because they haven't covered that. They know the weak points of the country. Dear friends, the devil knows your weak points. The devil is aware of your weak points. And that is why, like I said in the previous point, you can't cast out your flesh issues. You've got to deal with your flesh issues. You've got to deal with your sin. And then you and then you got to repent of your sin. And then you cast out the devil. You understand? You get that authority and power. So because the devil knows your weaknesses, he knows where he can get you. Now, how do you get and you, you bring the enemy to his knees? I'm going to give you three points. They're coming up on the screen. Humility, purity, and love. If you walk in humility, if you walk in purity, if you walk in love, you got the enemy under your feet in Jesus' name. He has no hold over you because what is the opposite of humility? Pride. What is the opposite of purity? Evil and sin. What is the opposite of love? Hatred. That is what the enemy works with. The devil is only on the contrary spirits. And if you maintain those three as a believer today, I tell you, you will carry a level of authority in your life that you did not even think was possible. Dear friends, I conclude with something totally abstract today. This will probably just surprise you with this conclusion, but I'm going to be putting it up on the screen now so that you can read it with me together as I conclude. The key to spiritual warfare and maintaining our authority is to find a balance. Jesus sometimes cast out demons out of people and other times he healed people with no mention of the demonic at all. Yes, it's staying on the screen there. I want you to understand because many children of God, they go out and they just want to fight and fight and fight and fight and deal and every single thing, even if the child has got a headache, it's a demonic attack. Even if, the, if there's an issue with your leg and you've got a limp, it's a demonic attack. It is not a demonic attack, my dear friend. Don't give so much of credit to the devil. We are aging. Everybody's aging. Sickness comes. These things happen. But understand that this is just a mortal body. This body cannot live forever. This body has to go to the grave one day. What's important is your soul. And so with that authority you carry, exercise the purpose that God has placed on your life and you will see great and mighty things take place in the lives of your personal life and those of your family in Jesus name. Amen. Were you blessed today? I want you just to send me a, a uh, comment now and just say, I have the authority. Hashtag I have the authority. Come, send that through now. Every one of you, whether you're watching on YouTube or whether you're watching on Facebook, hashtag I have the authority. Amen. Send that in. Send it in. I want to see that. Every single one of you, if there's two or three of you, 
Send it two or three times. Hashtag, I have the authority. Come, I want to see that come in right now. Let us make this declaration over the, the spirit atmosphere over your home that you have the authority and remind the devil that you are in control. Right now, as you are doing that, just stand with me. Let us just conclude right now in prayer. Father, today I thank you for this word. I thank you, God, that you have given us all authority and all power, that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven, loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. And so, Father, today I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that, Lord, you will begin to do great and mighty exploits in the lives of your children as they will exercise this God-given authority and they will start to fulfill the plan and the purpose that you have for their lives. I pray right now in Jesus' name, open up their minds and change the way of thinking. Let them realize and come to the uh, understanding of the awesome power and authority that they carry as children of God. And so right now, I thank you for your word. Let your word start to grow in their lives. And in this coming week and months, we're going to see a new level of authority and power that's going to be existing in the lives of each child, believer, son and daughter in Jesus' mighty name. And right now, for those of you, if you have, do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you want to give your heart to the Lord today and wherever you are, I want you just to raise your hands. I've done that many years ago and I tell you, dear friend, my life was never the same. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to know more about this, our information is on the screen. Just contact us and connect with us and you will find out more about what God is doing, who He is and what He can do for you. And if that is you right now, just bow your heads wherever you are and say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you today in the name of Jesus. I repent of my sins. Cleanse me. Wash me by your precious blood. I ask you today to heal me from all my brokenness and take my feet and place it on higher ground. I love you. I trust you. And I know that there are great days in store for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. If that is you and you've sent in and you said that prayer, I want you to message us. Don't do it on this public platform. You can send it direct to us on our WhatsApp number that is there. And we will have a team that will pray over you specifically and hold you up in prayer. Dear friends, thank you. It has been such a blessing be with you, being with you today. Thank you for just joining us and being online. And we look forward to seeing you next week, Sunday. Remember, it's Father's Day and we've got a huge celebration in store. Uh, I will see you on Tuesday night at 6.55 p.m. We have a change of times. We are moving the services five minutes earlier and so that you can come on five minutes earlier and be part of the entire service. We normally play a, a worship song in the five minutes in the run up to the time. So it is time for you to get in. Don't come in late. Now it's locked down. Yeah, if it's once or twice you do that, but don't come late to a service and don't be ill-disciplined when you're worshiping God. If you're going to have that attitude with God, I can tell you, my friends, you're going to find it difficult. When you take God serious, God takes you serious. So next week, Sunday, we will be coming online at 8.55 a.m. And on Tuesday night, I will see you at 6.55 p.m. God bless you. Stay online as you get the concluding remarks. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our online service. We live stream our services weekly on Sundays at 9 a.m. and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. If you would like to connect with us, you can reach out on any of our social media platforms. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us today at the Family Church, serving and building the multi-generational family.